The last section in Unit 2 deals with energy, which we've been talking about uh, throughout the last half of the chapter, and how energy relates to nutrition. So we're not going to spend a lot of time on this, but it, it's useful to know um, in real-world settings that, that basically calories, the calories that we have been discussing um, are also used when describing how much energy food has. So the bullet point here says that on food level, uh, on food labels, energy is shown as something called a nutritional calorie. And I put nutritional in italics here, and I'm pointing out that calorie here is written with a capital letter C. So it's actually a little bit different than the type of calorie that we have been talking about on the previous slide, but it's related. Um, and I'll talk about what the capital C means in, in a minute. Um, in other countries, in countries outside of the U.S., very often people will describe how much energy a certain piece of food has um, in units of kilojoules. So we talked about joules as being a way of measuring energy earlier, and a kilojoule is 1,000 joules. So very often in other countries you'll see the energy of uh, certain pieces of food described in units of kilojoules. In the United States, for the most part, we use something called a nutritional calorie. Again, it's calorie with a capital C. And basically, one calorie with a capital C is equal to 1,000 calories with a lowercase c. So the calories that we have been using in the previous slides have dealt with lowercase calories, and 1,000 of those is equal to one nutritional calorie. And um, those of you who are familiar with the prefixes, you can also say that one calorie, one nutritional calorie, with a capital C, is equal to one kilocalorie. So again, the punchline here is really to, to realize that um, food, the, the energy content of food can be described either using joules, kilojoules, calories, or nutritional calories. And then you can look at food, um, different types of food, and see that they have different amounts of energy associated with them. So as an example, um, carbohydrates here have about 17 kilojoules per gram of carbohydrate. That's, that's a rough estimate, but, but it's a reasonable estimate. Fat, fat um, foods that contain large portions of fat contain uh, more than twice as much um, energy for every gram that they have. So fat contains about 38 kilojoules for every gram of any food that is primarily made of fat, like oils and butter and things like that. And then protein, um, proteins have about 17 kilojoules of energy for every gram of protein. So again, the punchline that I want you to uh, take home from this is that you can measure the energy content of food using the units we have been describing, either joules, kilojoules, calories, or nutritional calories. So that's it for chapter two. In summary, um, what I would like you to come away uh, after having worked on chapter two is the following. I want you to have a general sense of what matter is, the stuff we can sense or feel. Um, know that matter is made of atoms. There are 118 different types of atoms, also known as elements. You can have pure substances, and they can either be made of a single element, they can be compounds, or they can be molecules. And I want you to know the definitions of compounds and molecules. Matter can change in uh, two major ways. One is called a change of state, um, which is a type of physical change, or matter can change uh, by chemical change which is when the atoms or molecules rearrange their attachments. And again, uh, there is energy associated with matter. There are two types of energy. Uh, there's kinetic energy and there's potential energy. You should know the difference between these two types of energy. You should know that energy is typically measured in calories or joules, or modified units of calories or joules, like kilojoules and kilocalories. You should know how to convert between different, uh, different temperatures, different units of temperature if you're given the appropriate formulas. should know what specific heat is and how to perform specific heat calculations. should know how to read the heating curve that I described in a previous section. should know what heat of fusion and heat of vaporization are and how to do those types of calculations. And you should know that food energy is usually described in kilojoules or kilocalories. And that's it for Chapter 2. I will see you in Chapter 3.